Hey everyone, Ro here. Today we're reviewing the Horus Heresy novel Sigismund, The Eternal Crusader by John French. As always, we'll do a spoiler-free review followed by a little spoiler talk of some of the things that stood out for me. So, with that said, let's just jump straight in. So Sigismund the Eternal Crusader, a companion of sorts to the Luther and Valdor novels before it. As the Primarchs have received their own series, so too are the other notable characters of the Heresy. And so far they've all been thoroughly enjoyable reads. On a side note, I hope that means we'll be getting a Malkador instalment one day. But I digress, for me going into Sigismund, I was very much wondering what to expect. Though of course we all know his future story with the Siege of Terror and beyond, he's still always been a little bit of an enigma for me. So yesterday I sat down on a beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon to give it a read. And well, considering we're discussing it today, that might give you a bit of an idea on how much I enjoyed it. It was great. I picked it up and I did not put it down the whole way through. Now if we begin with the man himself Sigismund, John French the author really manages to portray the mystique that surrounds him within the legions. The aura and reputation that spreads before him. It's a real fine balance to walk so it's not theatrically overdone. And I really think he nailed it. Of course you'll get to see the Sigismund as you'd expect. The one who just feels the breed apart from the rest of his legion. However, not only that, you get to feel and experience the evolution he's had to undergo to get there. Sigismund, as any other major character within the lore, has had a journey to become the legend that he is. And here John French manages to give us a glimpse into that journey. The Eternal Crusader is very much an insight into the entire life of Sigismund. And you'll get some real highlights along the way that will definitely pique your interest. Sigismund as perhaps a true son of Dawn is not necessarily as open a canvas as say a Yasu guy from the White Scars. However, I found his portrayal in this particularly good. And most importantly, I really enjoyed the subtle evolution that unwinds in him as the narrative continues. He always felt to me like I would expect Sigismund to be. And by the end of the novel, there wasn't a single moment where I felt that Sigismund had not lived up to his legacy. This novel enhances Sigismund in all the right ways. And as great as the portrayal and insight into Sigismund is, I have to say the characterization of some of the supporting cast is even better. Obviously, this is a spoiler-free review, so I won't be talking about specific characters. But I think it's safe to say in being a heresy novel, you'd expect other well-known faces to arrive. And well, they do throughout. And this here for me is where the author John French turned an absolutely enjoyable read into an absolute masterclass. When these names arrive, not only do they feel right as the characters we know, but it's hard to explain. You feel their reputation with them, just by the way that the author uses them, describes them, their actions, their mannerisms, they feel every inch the legend that they are. There are names within the lore, particularly when it comes to the Horus Heresy, that just traverse the boundaries of the page. Their names have a certain weight to them. And the author brings that to life not only really well, but without it feeling or becoming repetitive. Each and every time when one of those prominent names arrives, it never does not feel special. You feel like you're witnessing something that matters. And with all that said, never once do you feel like it's taken away from Sigismund's story. 
His character is portrayed consistently and strongly throughout. And that actually leads me on to another real big strength of this read. It remains focused on the main character. This is a story dedicated to Sigismund, and Sigismund is what you get. In remaining focused on the character that matters, not only does it give you more time with him, but it also in turn helps you bond and gain a greater level of understanding. Sigismund the Eternal Crusader is an insight into the evolution and journey of the man that makes the legend. And it doesn't waste time trying to tell you something else. Overall, the book just gained strength as it went on for me. The further in I went, the more pages that I turned, it kept drawing me in all the more. The middle and last acts are particularly strong. This is not your typical battle scenario. And for me, I really think that that worked in its favour. It feels like a slower pace. You know it's the characters that are the ones keeping you drawn in. Honestly, with a strong portrayal of Sigismund, the top-notch appearances, if you're an Imperial Fist fan, this is undoubtedly a 5 out of 5, blessed by the Emperor. And honestly, even if you're not, you'll be at least up there on a 4 out of 5 at the very least. It is just a great read, plain and simple. And one I thoroughly recommend. But that's it for the spoiler-free review. Now a little spoiler talk reaction for those of you who have already read it yourselves. So yeah, what a read. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I really thought there were some real highlights just scattered throughout this one. I'm sure subscribers would know by now, but I very much practice what I preach and try my best to avoid spoilers before reading any books. And I managed to do so with this. So I really wasn't expecting to see Sigismund actually being recruited into the Legion. I mean, that was a highlight in of itself. But then when you see the we have come for you, how different things could have been for Sigismund. Now, for me, as I was trying my best to convey in the review without giving up spoilers, the appearances by the other big names was really well done. The appearances of Khan and Sevatar in particular. But I really just want to talk about the scenes with the Primarchs first. The way John French was describing them was particularly visceral. Ferris Manus felt dangerous. This was quite possibly the most dangerous Ferris Manus has ever felt for me. Even though they were just glimpses of him, I just absolutely loved it. He was like a burning furnace of violence, just simmering under the surface. And it just fit the Gorgon. The moment where Ferris is telling Dawn you don't understand what you're dealing with, and when Dawn questions it, Ferris just point blankly looking up at him and doubling down. I just loved it. This felt like Ferris should. Almost that older brother aspect, with only Russ and Horus being found before him. That's the rest he views himself above. I'm bigger, I'm tougher, I'm older. No mincing words, straight and to the point. Sure, you may not like Ferris being wrong again, but the essence of his character for me, that edge of brutalness and toughness, I really, really liked that feel. I would love to see John French write some great crusade era Ferris in the future, because he definitely seemed to grasp his character. However, it wasn't just Ferris. All three of the Primarchs just felt brilliant. It really drew me back to the days when the Primarch still had that mystical quality. And I think that was very much intentionally done, to represent Sigismund who is still very new to being around them. This was not the Sigismund as you are used to seeing him. You compare that and move it on to what we see at Eulenor, 
and this is a much more experienced and adjusted Sigismund. One that's much more accustomed to the Primarchs, but then one where the majesty and mystique is kept and further enhanced by the appearance of the Master of Mankind. Of course, we never get as many details as we'd like when it comes to him, but as an example of the tiny little things that stand out for me, I just absolutely adored the Emperor walking alongside Rogel and Horus after they left the balcony, and Sigismund not even noticing at first. They're simply just walking along, talking and getting along. Barely a few lines of description, but just the kind of small moments that I absolutely adore. The Emperor just having a natural conversation with his sons. Of course, we then got the wink-wink Sigismund seeing the Emperor as wearing black armor, and the conversation between the two further referencing his Templar future. I was wondering if there was going to be some kind of major revelation there, but no, it was what it was. Just a little nod and a wink for the future to come. However, for all those elements I loved, I have to say the standout for me was the portrayal of Sevatar. That entire scene was fantastic. Two completely different personalities, so contrasting against each other. The fight was enjoyable, ending in the forfeit by Sevatar, but it was just that interplay beforehand. The perfect blend of tension and anticipation. I really feel that Sevatar is a great contrast against Sigismund. One, the paragon of service and duty, and the other, well, Sevatar. But anyway, as always guys, what did you think? Did you enjoy Sigismund as much as me? Was it what you expected, or maybe was it full of surprises? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. If you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.